the power of God to America and the world back on the screen. Welcome to your love world. We are going to have a great program today. And the people said? Amen. Uh -huh, I love it. Listen, I have with me some wonderful guests. Pastor Jonathan Miller, you've been my friend for a long time. And I just met Pastor Tony Suarez. Yes. What an amazing anointing on both of you. You've had an impact on my life for years. I, w I grew up watching... Uh, you on television, on Christian so television, fine. and it was an impact to my ministry. You used to come to the Crusades, and what, what did you say to me? You used to hide from the cameras or something? I, I, used, to, I used to sneak <laughs> into the Crusades. I would, I would sneak into Benny Hinn Crusades, and when the boom mic would come, or, or when the camera would come by, right. I would just, <laughs> and then I'd come back. But I was hungry. I was hungry for the miraculous. I was hungry because I would tune into television, and I'd see 24 wheelchairs empty yeah. in one service, and you'd go to another city and see it again. I hadn't seen one. And I was hungry. I, want, I wanted to see the miraculous. And I got frustrated at the United Center. It was 2001. People are being healed left and right. And you hadn't prayed yet. It was during worship. It was just during praise and worship. People start getting healed. And I walked out frustrated with a holy frustration. Because I want to, I want to experience it in, the, in my church, in my father's church. And I walk out. And there are ladies, they are pulling on the doors of the United Center, yelling at security, let me in, let me in. And security has their arms locked. They can't let anyone in, not because you won't let them in. The city of Chicago won't let them in because yeah. of a fire code. But the, uh, one particular lady sh shouted. She said, if I can just get in, I'm going to get a miracle. Mm. And it was right then that I realized the difference between how I was coming to church and how people were coming to your crusades. I was coming to church with my fingers crossed, hoping, I hope I get a miracle. People were coming to your crusades like kids on Christmas with their hands open, expecting, if I just get in the door, I'm going to get what I need from God. It was different. I, I had hope. They had expectation. And it was there that I understood that expectation was the highest level of faith that exists. Where you, do, you're, you it's no more fingers crossed, but it's like a kid. A kid goes to, uh, goes to sleep on Christmas Eve with one eye open. <laughs> Just in case, day. waiting for Stay the out. gift. And that's how they would come to the Crusades. And that's how they've come for years to your services. They just know that if they can get in the presence of God, which you, you if I can say it this way, cultivate through praise and worship. He is so high and lifted up in those services through the praise and worship of the people of God that it is impossible for him not to touch his people. And my life was forever changed, forever impacted, sneaking in to Benny Hinn Crusades in Chicago. I mean, you're seeing things I'm not seeing, so please help me. Pastor, he could. This is what the, the Lord shared with me. Brother. I love it. I'm <laughs> excited. I'm trying to not be so Pentecostal okay. right no, now. Please, I want to run around the studio. Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> but what is the Lord doing? He, he, what are you seeing? Pastor, he could have trusted the last day church to any general of the faith. He could have given it to Wigglesworth. <laughs> he could have given it to Catherine Kuhlman. He could have given it to Oral Roberts. Yeah, he gave it to this generation. Why? He gave it he, because he trusts this generation. He trusts us with his church. God spoke to me at the beginning of this year, and he said, I trust you with this church. Isn't that precious, though? It's something to trust God. It's another thing when God trusts you. And when God trusts you, sometimes he lets go. And sometimes he doesn't speak. And it doesn't make sense to our mind, but think, anyone that has a child, think about this for a moment. I taught my children to walk by letting them fall because I let go. Oh, yeah. I had to let go of their hand, not because I don't love them. Don't call DCFS. I'm a good dad. <laughs> but I, I didn't let go because I, I wanted to see them hurt. I wanted them to build their muscle mm. because I trusted that they could take another step. Yeah. I trusted that they could take another step. And so... I, I, and I, Pastor, I feel the spirit of prophecy on this Please, studio already to prophesy me. to someone and it's saying, God, I don't hear you. I don't see you. And the Lord would speak back to you and say, that's because I trust you to make this decision. Mm. I trust you to take this next step and you're not going to fall. You're not going to waver. The Lord says your life is not like the price is right. There's not three doors. There's one <laughs> door and I am the door and you're going to pick the right door and you're going to walk through the right door. So that spirit of insecurity and condemnation that's on you, that's constantly making you toss and turn at night saying, 
saying, well, I don't know if I'm making the right decision. I need, I need five confirmations and two prayer cloths, and I need, I, need, I, need, I need to get, I just need a confirmation from an apostle. The Lord himself speaks to you today yeah. and says, I trust you. And if God trusts you, the Bible says, if God be with you, who can be against yeah. you? Who can be against you, Pastor? Nobody, no one. No way. I have been in church my entire life, and I've heard that Jesus is coming. I've heard he was coming. I heard he's coming in 1988. I heard, and, there was, and there was Me 88 too. reasons yeah. why he was oh, coming yeah. in 88. Man, it was waiting for him. And he didn't and come. Was, yeah. And then I remember being a young man saying, oh, God, wait until I get married. And now I'm saying, oh, God, wait until I get married again. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I've waited. I love it. I've waited for the coming of the Lord. And, and I'm, not, I'm not the most ardent student of eschatology. Mm. Uh, you know, there's people that believe, subscribe to pre-trib, post-trib, uh, mid-trib. I subscribe, Pastor, to Pantrib. I'm going to wait and see how it all pans out. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> but what I do know is he's coming. Yes. So why hasn't he come yet? It's because the mercy hand of Almighty God. I think Gabriel has the trumpet ready to, and I think the mercy hand of God has withheld it. Oh. it said there's still souls to be saved. Yep. yep. There's still nations to be reached. Yep. Pastor Chris and Pastor Benny to the Love World Network. This is how prophetic and important and apostolic your work is to the world, to the earth. Because the Bible says that before the end comes, this gospel has to be preached to every nation. With power. With power. And pastor, they say there are 3,000 language groups right now that don't have a Bible translated in their language. They haven't heard the name of Jesus. And here I am trying to figure out why hasn't he come. And it dawned on me until Matthew 24 is fulfilled until we reach every nation. Now that's the prophetic anointing that's on this network, on your ministry, and Pastor Chris's nation, yeah. uh, and, and, and uh, upon Pastor Chris's nation, and upon his ministry. Because communism has tried to stop the gospel, but communism can't stop this network from creeping into yeah. caves. And or creeping China into, either. Or China. Mm -hmm. in Nor I believe, Pastor, I believe the door of North Korea is going to open, and it's no a bold doubt. statement, but as soon as the door opens, I'm going. I hope Jonathan's, yes, I, I, I don't know who we're going to go with, but we're just going to go. And when we get there, we're going to find a remnant. We're going to find a church that says we suffered persecution, but we counted all as gain because we yes. did it to the glory of yeah. Jesus Thank you, Christ. We're going to find that the church didn't die in the caves of China hiding from communism. The church didn't die hiding from Never. the dictatorship in North Korea. Never. The church didn't die after thousands of wars in the Middle East because we're built and built on this promise. It says the gates of hell shall Never. not prevail. Now, we were prevail. talking about having a word from the Lord. When I first moved to Virginia, we had a small kitchen fire, and the, the stove, our, our stove burnt. We had just bought the stove. I bought it three weeks before the fire, <laughs> and I bought the stove mainly because it had a warranty. They said, if anything happens, it doesn't matter, no questions asked, you return the stove. And I'm sitting looking at my stove thinking, oh, good God. You can't say, oh, my God, but oh, God, oh God <laughs> what will I do? And I said, how long have I had this stove? Yeah. I've had it three weeks. I got a 30-day warranty. I called the store. Please don't judge me. I called the store. I said, you know, it's not what I expected after three weeks from the stove. <laughs> and the store said, can you, for quality assurances, can you tell us why? I said, no, I cannot. They said, why not? I said, because your warranty says no questions asked. <laughs> so a few days later, they sent three men to the house, and they walked in, and they looked at my stove, and they said, are you for real? And with trembling hands, I held up my warranty, and he said, give me that. And he read it. He said, aren't you lucky? You read the warranty. And the other guy said, do we have to take it? He said, that's what the warranty says. Mm. Now, why would I bring that up today? Because I know a lot of burnt out Christians. Yeah. Uh, they haven't read the warranty. Wow. 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 They don't know what this says. They, they don't know that the warranty says that, that a weak man huh. falls seven times, but he gets it's back up again. Uh, they don't know that the Bible says that the sick can say that they're healed, that the poor can say that they're rich, that the weak can say you're strong. If you knew the warranty, yeah. if you knew the warranty, you'd focus more on your promise and your problem. If you knew what the word said, you'd focus more on where you're going than where you're coming from. And there is a word from the Lord for you today. In fact, you, you said that there was revelation that the Lord is giving you as you read the Bible in Hebrew. Yep. I've read the Bible in English and I've read the Bible in Spanish growing up. I'm of a Colombian descent. I've read it in both languages. And John 1 and 1 is, is um, one of the most powerful verses that we hear. In the beginning was the Word, mm -hmm. and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that's powerful. Mm -hmm. But in Spanish, it says, en el principio. <laughs> Era el, it sounds more romantic too. Yeah. En el principio era el verbo, y el verbo era con Dios, y el verbo era Dios. There is truth hidden in the Spanish 
Yeah, we haven't caught in English. In English, it doesn't say in the beginning. In Spanish, it doesn't say in the beginning what was the word. What does it say? It says in the beginning was the verb. Because my God doesn't speak nouns and pronouns and adjectives. Uh. He speaks verbs. <laughs> verbs are active words, creative words, life-giving words. That's why the scripture says that his word can't return void. Because when he speaks, he speaks a verb. It's a word that's in action. It's in motion. So when he said he was going to heal your family, that's a verb. When he said he's going to restore your marriage, that's a verb. When he said he's going to heal your body, that is a verb. And it cannot return until it fulfills what God said. So I've made it a habit in my life. When I get a word, I say, I got a verb from the Lord. Because that word is active. It's doing something. We say, what? What is going on? I don't see anything. I don't see any motion. Well, if you could see in the heavenlies, you'd, say, you'd see a word that's going before you, and it's slaying giants, and it's removing obstacles, and it's making a way where oh, there was no way. The word, and what's going to happen is that, Pastor Jonathan said, you just trust God through your worship, your praise, and what happens is that one day, you're going to step into the fulfillment mm. of the word, because the word went ahead and did the work. You don't have to do the work. Mm. This is Sam Samson laid on Delilah's lap, and in a very, since you say we're young people, I'll use a young term. Delilah said, boo, where does your power come from? And he said, it's my hair. Pastor Benny, you never thought I'd say that. Lord Jesus, please let me come back to this network. Okay. She says, where does your power come from? And he says, my hair. Samson puts his strength in what he has and what he does. What if... Just humor me for a moment. What happens if Samson says, Delilah, my power comes from God? Wow. Wow. He'd broken every other rule of the yeah, covenant. Yeah, didn't ever. He, was, he wasn't supposed to drink. He drank. He wasn't supposed to taste, uh, touch a dead carcass. He gave his parents honey out of a dead carcass. <laughs> wasn't supposed to hang out with La Filisteas, as we say in Spanish, with the Philistine women. This was number two. Yeah. He had broke, and the power had never left him. The anointing had never left him. It wasn't until he put his trust in his own ability that God said, well, if it's your hair, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 there's a Samson watching. Now, I'm not talking about the Samson that fell with Delilah. I'm talking about the Samson that has a destiny over your life, has a promise over your life. Stop putting your trust in what you do and what people say you have. You look to your Redeemer. You say, my power, my anointing, my source comes from God. And so I will trust in what thus saith the word of the Lord. When you get to Hebrews chapter 11 and you read what's called the chapter of faith, you see the Noahs and the Abrahams. Barak made it. Gideon made it. Everyone made it, Pastor. And then it says, oh yeah, and by the way, Samson. Yeah. Samson. Uh, yeah. The legalists won't preach that. The Pharisees won't preach that. Yeah. But thank God for the truth that yeah. before his death, he killed more people in his death than in his life. Why? Because there was a destiny over his life. Yeah. And when God promises something to you, you might walk in circles in a desert for 40 years. You might go lay on Delilah's lap. You might sin. You might run away. Jonah, there's a Jonah. Listen, you might go hang out. But even that whale where you've been hanging out for three days is the mercy hand to God because what should have killed him turned into a three-day prayer meeting that put him back on his course to lead him to his destiny. So Amen. I'm talking today to the Samsons. I'm talking to the Jonas. Hallelujah. I'm talking to anybody that says, I don't see you trust in the verb of the Lord because it shall, it shall, it shall yes. come to pass. Pastor Benny. Hallelujah. Sure. I feel the Holy Keep Ghost going, today. Brother. I feel the this. Holy Ghost. When you were, talk, when you were talking, Pastor Jonathan, I, I, and I opened my Bible and then Pastor Benny said, he said, don't listen to the mockers. Yeah. Open my Bible to 1 Samuel. And, I, and, and it just, it's, it came to me. I, the Holy Spirit dropped it in me. There was a woman named Hannah. She's a good woman. She's a righteous woman. Yep. She goes to the temple every year, but she's barren. And she goes with her husband, Elkanah. And Elkanah loves her. But there's something that Hannah is missing that Hannah wants. There's another lady named Penina who has what Hannah doesn't have. And she makes a mockery. She makes mockery of what Hannah doesn't have. And so every day, every year, Hannah has to go and worship while Penina is mocking what Hannah doesn't have. And Hannah prays for a child. She's believing for a child. And Elkanah says... Would you just be satisfied with what you have? Right. I've been good to you. The Lord says, be careful with the Elkanas in your life that are trying to weigh down your faith and diminish or dilute your faith for what you're believing. And there's a Hannah that's watching and you're saying, I just, but I, it don't, don't be careful. And Elkanah's not a bad man. So I'm, th th here's the word of the Lord. I'm not talking about the devil. I'm talking about church people. Right, right. I'm talking about good people. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to judge them because I'm going to heaven with them. But you be careful what the righteous say to you. Be still and know that I am God. Amen. Be careful who you let speak 
and who, who you allow to influence you. Elkanah was trying to quench her faith and say, you don't have to pray for that. You got enough. But how many Hannahs are watching tonight? I've, there's a Hannah in the studio. Yes. There's a, there, I don't know how many multiplied Hannahs are watching. And you, you know that you want more than what you have. You want to go further than where you are. And there's nothing wrong with your crazy faith. In fact, even the church <laughs> said you're crazy because Eli said, good God, woman, would you stop praying? And she said, I'm not drunk. I'm not drunk. I'm believing for a child. And, Elijah, and, and Eli, I don't know if I said Elijah, Eli, okay, but you know what I'm story. talking about. It's yeah. closer. <laughs> It's in the warranty. Exactly. Read the warranty when you get yeah. home. It's a Bible test. Actually, Elijah's name in Hebrew is Eliyahu. Well, so there, quite close. Well, there you go. <laughs> but uh, Eli says, then according to thy faith, let it be granted unto you. And a year later, two years later, Hannah wasn't going to the festival alone. She wasn't going to the feast alone. She was dragging a Samuel with her. Yeah, I'm prophesying yeah, yeah. to a Hannah right now that is barren and you don't see the Jesus, answer that you've Jesus, been praying Jesus. and Elkanah has tried to talk you out of it and panina has been on the side making mockery of you. The Lord your God has heard your prayer. He's seen Amen. your tear. And listen, and here's the word. The Bible says she cried bitter tears. God didn't answer her bitter tears. It wasn't until she prayed. Yeah. It wasn't mm -hmm. until she brought the petition to the Lord. Yeah. God can't answer just simply seeing tears. Mm -hmm. It's not an, you, God can't respond Ooh, to bitterness. Powerful. I love God that. can't respond to bitterness or weariness or even hurt. Mm -hmm. It's prayer. Mm -hmm. He answers the prayer, the effectual prayer of the righteous right. availeth much. He answers your faith. So what did she do? She prayed through the bitter tears. Mm -hmm. She believed through the anguish. You have to push through tears and turn them into tears of prayer. You have to keep going for you. You, you don't stop. Uh, a, a, a mutual friend of ours, a dear lady who has been instrumental in my life named Ann Jimenez. She said, Tony, when you see someone get blessed, don't get jealous. Because <laughs> I, you know, I, so I used to see somebody get blessed and I, in my mind I'd say, well, how long have they been in church? Do they tithe? Where do they, have they given, have they given to Love World USA? Have they given to Benny Hinn ministry? Have they given to my ministry? Who is this person? Right. God can't bless that. Yeah. She said, when you see someone get blessed, you say, thank you, Jesus. Then you say, me too, Lord. Yeah. Because he responds to praise yep. and he responds to faith. Mm. So when I see you get blessed, when I see you get blessed, when I watch you get blessed, I don't get jealous. I get expectant mm. because if God can do it for you, Hannah, that means I'm next on the oh, list man. because we have the same father. So I'm watching you get blessed today. I'm hearing someone, there, there's widows and widowers watching and you heard my story right. and you said, God, but when, but when? Mm. Change that and say, Thank you, Jesus, for what you did for Tony and Gina. Now, me too, Lord. And you watch as God answers to your expectant mm -hmm. faith because you trusted. You believed in spite of the mockers, in spite of the good people. In spite of the good. Lazarus is in a tomb. Jesus has shown up to do a miracle. Mary and Martha have asked Jesus to show up. He shows up. And when he shows up, Martha says, you're too late. Mm -hmm. He says, Martha, your brother will live again. Mm -hmm. I, th I think she got sarcastic, Pastor. Mm -hmm. She said, I know one in the resurrection. One day we're going to And he said, uh, Martha, I'm, I am <laughs> the resurrection. I think, I think if we could hear the Bible, he think, I think he almost uh, chuckled and said, <clears throat> uh, I am the resurrection yeah, and I'm, the life. And I'm right here. She, and she said, whatever you say. Yeah. And she walks off. And he says, remove the stone. And that's when Martha says, no, stop. Spanish says, ya basta. It means enough is enough. You've gone too far. Yeah. He's dead. He's really dead. He stinketh, John 11 to 39. That means he's too dead for you to do what I asked you to do. Proving. Wow. This is the word. That Martha had faith to ask, but she didn't have faith to receive. Whoa. She had faith to bring a petition, but she didn't have a faith to see the petition all the way through. through. That's good. And while that's going on, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, because that's what they do, they showed up. Mm -hmm. And they said, isn't it sad he could heal the blind, mm -hmm. open the ears of the deaf, but he couldn't heal your brother. Isn't it amazing how when you need a word, you can't find anyone to encourage you. No one sends you a DM on Instagram. No one likes you on Facebook. Can't get, you can't get a retweet if you paid for one. <laughs> but everyone comes out of the woodworks to say, ah, oh, 
I heard you get in divorce, you lose in the house. Yeah. They're, are they taking Same both cars or just one car? Is it? Are you filing for bankruptcy or are you just going to try to string it out? Yeah. Have you already yeah. applied for the? It's amazing. I, oh, I heard your son ran away. Uh, he always was a troubled yes. child, wasn't yes. he? And you he just—he's been ashamed for many, many years. And I, are. Are you still going to that church? I bet, did the pastor ever show up for you? Yeah. It's amazing how you'll find people, but God will wait. See, because yes, God will wait. Yes. God will wait for the Sadducees and the Pharisees. He'll wait for the critics. He'll wait for the gossip. He'll wait for the scorners. He'll wait for them all to show up. And I said, God, why do you do that? He said, did you not read my word? Hmm. Where I said, I'll prepare a table for you yeah. in the presence of of your enemies. Mm. See, all those scorners and gossips and all those people that are coming back in your life, that's not the devil. That's God. He's preparing a table for a blessing for you in the presence of those that said you'd never be blessed, you'd never get up, you'd never be healed, you'd never rise again, you'd never be restored. So if you are surrounded by enemies, I'd give God the best praise you've given hey. him in 2018 before yeah, the year ends yeah. because you're about to get a verb that's God. In fact, you're not about to get it. You got it in the last 50 minutes of this program. You got a verb and that verb is about to come to pass. And so in Jesus' mighty name, upon yeah. the authority of his word, and the power that's in his name. I command you to be healed, to be delivered, receive to be it, restored receive it, receive it. right, right now in, in Jesus', Jesus name. mighty, mighty name. Get it now. Whoo. Hey, My I'm God, you're anointed. The whole, pray, for pray for him. Pray for him. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your voice and pray. Italia da Moho Santa. All of you pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, people of God. Italia Moho Saya Mahaya. Pray for him. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Jesus. we declare today that your people have as much right to the promise of the whipping post as they do the cross of Calvary. And as easy as we believe for salvation, we believe, we believe right now for the gift of healing. For amen. it is written, amen. Amen. by your stripes we are healed. So someone right now, I hear a clock. In, every time I've heard this clock for 20 years, it lets me know that God's healing a regular heartbeat. And right now you're being touched by the power of God. God's healing your heart. Your heart is being, whole, being made whole right now in Jesus' mighty name. Carpal tunnel syndrome is being healed. Even as it, there's, in fact, I see it. I can see it. You're holding a mobile device. You're watching the program and you're holding a mobile device and there's been pain. You've, you've, you've been having to rest your arm on a pillow to hold it up to watch it, but move that pillow right now because the Holy Ghost just touched your arm, there's strength, you're feeling it right now and call the number, call right now and say, I was just healed by the power of God and give God praise. Father, I thank you for everyone watching this program that needs healing in their soul, they need healing in their spirit, they need healing in their body. Father, upon the authority of your word and the power that is in the only name given under heaven by which we can be saved in the mighty, matchless, wonderful, majestic name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. I command you to be healed. I command you to be delivered. I command you to be restored. And now you can lift your hands. You can lift your voice. And as we've prayed it, receive it now. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody give God praise for what he's doing right now. Somebody, somebody was just healed of a tumor on your throat. People, keep praying. Come on, keep praying out loud. On the throat. That tumor is gone in Jesus' name. Pastor Jonathan, what, what, is, what is God showing? Someone's right knee is being healed. It clicks bad Hallelujah. from a car accident. If you just move that right now, that pain is going. A right elbow is being healed. Someone with a tumor in the neck. It's a, a swell in your lymph node system that's, that's going right now. If you would just touch that and feel that, and you better call that number on the screen and let us know what God is doing. Someone with breathing problems, there's been, I think it's a rib that's out of place, the left rib. It's caused your heart to beat fast. It's caused your breathing to be difficult. If you would just take a deep breath, that is being healed right now. And there are pastors that are watching, and even as I breathe, God is breathing a fresh breath into your spirit and causing a hunger to awaken Jesus again in you. Him. Not a hunger for crowds, not a hunger for resources, but a hunger for an intimate relationship yes. with the person, the presence, and the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm prophesying, Pastor, this Sunday, step out of your pulpit and let the Holy Spirit step into it. It's His pulpit. It's His church. Give Him your service and watch what He'll do. Hunger is being quickened in the hearts of men and women of God that Hallelujah. are watching today. And let me say this with hunger. I left a restaurant the other day, a very nice restaurant, and I left with two bags of food. My wife and I were there. 
And she said, you ordered too much food, and I have all these leftovers now. My children were able to eat. The, the nanny that was watching the kids was able to eat. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me that the only way we'll ever get to leftovers is when our hunger exceeds our need. Mm. Mm. When our appetite for the things of God is even bigger than what we need from God. Mm. And most preachers aren't even hungry enough to get enough oil to show up for the Sunday morning service, let alone to sustain you for the next 30 years of ministry. You better get hungry again. And whatever your need is in your mm. life, your hunger better exceed that need. Let your spiritual appetite be bigger than your natural need because my brother, my sister, that's where leftovers come. That's where abundance comes. I feel hunger being quickened in the hearts of God's You know, people are still getting healed. That's yes, wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody, I think you burned your leg. Something fell on your leg. I see a lot of uh, swelling and redness and all that. Mm. And the Lord's healing you. Father, in Jesus' name, let's all believe. Every sickness goes. Every disease goes. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Heal your people, Lord. Hallelujah. Heal your people.